So this is what the fluid or the movement of the materials looks like. Note they're representing the vessel where they're showing the end for the arteries, the end for the veins. This, this area that's around right here, these are going to be the tissues. So what you see is that if we follow what happens with the red, there will be movement out of the arterial end, not quite as much on the venous end. On the venous end, we get a lot of return from the tissues. Think about this for a second. We have to get materials out of the capillary into the tissues. We have to get the waste back into the capil into the vein, the, the venules, to return to the heart. And it's pressures that will help to do this. There are pressures that are created by the tissues themselves versus the pressure inside the capillary, and this will help to move material out and move material in for the flow. And that is going to be how we exchange those materials between the capillary, between the blood and the tissues at those capillaries. If those capillaries become permeable to materials that should not be moving through those capillaries, then what we're going to see is that larger molecules can leak into the interstitial fluid. If that happens, the colloid pressure will increase and that will make more fluid get pulled from the capillaries. When this happens and we get more fluid pulled from the capillaries than what is being returned to that um, capillary at the, vein, at the venous end, the fluid begins to build up in the tissues and that results in edema. There are different chemicals that will, that will cause this to happen. The plasma concentration in the blood, usually if we have liver disease, maybe kidney disease, maybe the protein starvation in the diets, okay, that can cause edema to build up. If there's blockage of the veins, we can get some uh, problems of the buildup of the fluids. If a limp vessel is removed, which is what happens a lot in women who have um, breast cancer, they will actually go in and remove the lymph nodes and so forth, and that'll actually lead to a huge buildup of fluid in either the right or left arm or both, depending on where they had the breast cancer, and it's a huge problem for them. They actually have to sleep at night in these compression sleeves all the way up their arms so that there aren't, they can decrease the edema and return the fluid back to the blood system so that it can circulate and get, be gotten rid of. So it becomes a very interesting action that occurs in these capillaries when we have to have the materials move into the tissues or the tissues getting rid of their waste. The veins that we're going to have, with the veins we find that, you know, as we have the blood flow into the capillaries, what's going to happen is we're going to meet the veins and we're going to have the return to the heart. And one of the things that happens is um, 
we're, we're, you know, dependent on the skeletal muscles to help return it, okay? And in the case where something begins to affect the blood volume, other, st um, other systems might come in to help, such as the nervous system. And when we look at the venous system, the veins, when we have um, their structure, okay, if we think about standing, if you have a position where you're standing a lot, okay, gravity is pushing on us. And therefore, blood pressure below the heart begins, um, we increase that blood pressure and decrease it above the heart, and we're going to find that we get a lot of blood flow to the lower extremities. As long as you get to have um, some movement with that standing, such as walking, which is the reason I try really hard to do a lot of walking when I'm doing my lecture, because if you don't and you just kind of stand in that one spot, all of that fluid, that blood, okay, as it flows to the lower parts of your body, it begins to, you know, kind of hang out down there longer than it should, and it can lead to edema. So we find that we're, you know, one of the things that will help the venous return is by being active. Some special circulatory routes that we have in the brain the brain regulates its own blood flow, and it does this based on the blood pressure and the chemicals that it has in, that get monitored in the blood. The biggest stimulus for the blood circulation to the brain is pH. Now, in the brain, some things that can go wrong with circulation, there can be TIAs, which are transic ischemic attacks. And this is brief episodes that happen in the cerebrum. And it can make you, you know, it, it can actually become a serious issue for some people. And basically blood flow to certain tissues is getting stopped. And it, you know, the blood flow needs to return. If there's a sudden death to the brain tissue, this is gonna be a stroke. The sooner that a stroke could be identified and corrected, the better the chances for returning to the full or returning to more of the activity for that part of the body. For the skeletal muscles, the blood flow is going to vary and muscle contraction and use will affect that blood flow. In the lungs, in the baby, in utero, because blood is carried to the fetus by the umbilical vein, and normally we think of blood, th blood flow by way of an artery, okay? Basically, the lungs are not in use. So when the baby is born, they're actually born with very oxygen-poor blood, and what they'll find is in the pulmonary circuit in the lungs, it's very poor in oxygen, but the veins are very rich in oxygen. So it actually has to be corrected. Um, you, you hear that old story about, well, you know, they smack the baby to make it start crying. Well, what they're, you know, really what they try to do is they're doing something to make the baby start breathing so that they do have that blood flow um, get, get um, corrected and start with oxygenation with the lungs moving into the system. The pulmonary circulation, if we look at the pulmonary circulation, those blood vessels, we have that huge pulmonary trunk we have that branch into the right and the left pulmonary arteries. We need to have that gas exchange between the air and the lungs 
and the blood that's flowing through it. And once again, that circuit is opposite. We think of arteries as being red, veins as being blue, but in the pulmonary circuit, it's the opposite, okay? We're gonna find that the arteries are blue and the veins are red. For our systemic circulation, the aorta becomes important, and one of the things that you'll find is the aorta, we have what's called the aorta, the aortic arch. The ascending is coming off the heart. The curve is the aortic arch. That has the arteries that are going to lead to circulation in the head, the upper arms, shoulders, neck, for the upper parts of the body. And then the descending aorta is going to begin to serve the rest of the body. Now the remainder of this chapter is basically pictures that are showing the arteries and the veins of the body. So this is going to be what we begin to start to study for the lab practical. So in these pictures, um, you also have it in your lab manual. I would begin to match this up to what I have in my list, and then we'll be using lab time for you to study these on the models.